Ages Chat. The podcast THC to Homies Chat. Can you let me ask? I think we could. Just two homies chat. Solar saying Solar I've searched, dudes. There's, there's, I, that's that would work. That would work. Anything that like rep, rep, reps like the flat bill, that, that's a big solar guy thing in the industry. It's, yeah. a, it's a joke now because it's such a thing. But like, dude, I've got 37 plus hats that are flat bill caps, the new era flat bill with the solar company on the top of it. Like, it's just, just a bunch. Them. It's whatever. But you see them walking, you know they're solar guys, what they're selling when they're walking through your neighborhood because they're the ones in the flat bills. The, the ones with the it doesn't matter. Bill. It could be orange or blue or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's you know they're selling solar. If they're wearing a normal hat with a normal bend, like it's on, like like here, if you're watching on the live stream here, two homies chatting. Um, well, then they're they're probably selling pest control or maybe maybe a roofing product or landscaping or something normal. Flat build. They're selling you solar. It's, I promise you that. It's, it's a good pretty, deal. You should listen, but yeah. be careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just don't, like everything, do your research. Like, don't say yes the first time, right? Like, when you go buy a car, you don't just yes. buy the, the first car. Like, you walk away. Maybe go back a little later, you know? Maybe just, like, say, hey, man, thanks. You know, keep going. But then, like, you know, think about it. Like Kenny said, do some Googles. Use Googles. Don't get crazy with the Google. Just, you know, basic Google. The ABCs of Google. If you don't know how to Google, YouTube that shit. All right. So, um, but for the most part, yeah, dude, I think, I think you're right. There's a lot of salespeople out there in like the Utah area. Well, like they start in Utah. Utah's like the, the hive. It's like the queen bee is in Utah. And then they disperse through Utah. And then all the other intercontinental 48 states because I don't know how many people are slinging pest control in Sitka, Alaska or some shit like that. More than you think. Solar as well in Hawaii. It's actually pretty common. In Hawaii, yeah. But like you think uh, are, is the solar the solar game in Alaska? I guess so, yeah. Because like your resources are already limited. So like the, you got to lock 40 in, days of light before 40 days of night. You know what I'm saying? You're going to need a big ass battery. I tell you what. Yo, if you are in Alaska right now listening to this fresh episode of Two Homies Chatting, one, we appreciate you. Two, if you're looking for some solar, hit my solar dude up. Two Lion Ken. If you call sol- and reference promo code Two Homies 20, I'll help you. But if you don't, <laughs> I ain't gonna help you because that's just hard as fuck to help you with up there. It's tough. It's tough. It's a tough region. I bet you logistics are crazy. Everything has to be a higher NEMA rating. Everything has to be rated for a, a colder temperature, which is really hard to do with batteries. Um, and so there's a few months out of the year that your battery might not work. So if you rely on it completely, as far as the technology is now, it's going to suck. You're going to be yeah. cold. So you got to have a generator. I, s- I could get you a generator too. I have. I'm not. I'm not a solar. It's in the bill, dude. I'm a distribution guy. Um, yeah, he has a curve to his bill, listeners. Just so everybody knows, you like Kenny's bill. Hat. You like that? Has you like an, this lid? Yeah, that, that looks good. I like that lid. It's clean. I'm a fan it's clean. of it as well. It's, it's it's top two lid right now, and it's it's new in it's rotation. New on the list. It's new on the list. Yeah, I threw. I threw. I, I got. I one noticed in you have right the now, Patriot too. hat yeah. on too. That's the. The, with the flat bill that the that they make now with the, with the rope, the thing that's coming back with the rope around the yeah, around it, the bill is on the fly. Brim, it looks good. Just and it just so you know, you. and that bill's fine. It looks good. I'm repping. It's got a small curve, small curve, not crazy. It's you know, it's got that. I got to keep that captain's look. Too. Bunny slope. It's but, got uh, a bunny slope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this I'm repping. Uh, shout out Wildwood Golf Course, the local Wednesday night league. Shout out to the WNL, to Wildwood Golf Course. I'm rocking the Squatch. Squatch carry and uh, just so you see, Kenny. Zoom that in a, for me. Oh, that's great. It's a, it's a Squatch that's carry. It's clubs. It's clubs. Yeah, yeah, it's clubs. Sasquatch golfing. That's amazing. So I I saw it from a distance, and I just assumed it was a Patriots hat because it kind of looks like. Because that's what I do. The, yeah, and it kind of looks like the silhouette of the Patriot guy. 
Um, yeah. But seeing what it is now, that actually amplifies how cool that hat is. Shout out to Wildwood. Shout out to Mensley. How's that going, dude? Bro, back to back Ws. All right, two weeks in a row, po- champs. Put, putting some points on the board, climbing the rankings. We got we got two more weeks out there. Have you have uh, you have you carved any time the out for putting practice? Yeah, yeah, I do arrive early. Um, yep. You know, we get the reps and we got good team strategy. Uh, you know, we're always looking for great team names. If anybody ever wants to like throw something out there, you hit us up to homies chatting at gmail.com. Uh, what do you yeah. guys? What's what's your homie's name? Uh, Alex. Alex, the homie. Yeah, wolf and dogs. Wolf dogs. Yeah, the homie Alex. I, I just yeah. yeah, I wanted to make sure. And so peace and link. You know, peace and puzzles. Yeah, I just want to give the people you know the ingredients to work with. Yeah, because yeah. if you're looking for a good team name, you got to have a few you know pillars of information. It's it's a it's key. It's Location. key to met. Yeah, you want to make sure the locker room jives, right? Everybody's on board, things like that. It's important. It's it says cohe. It's it's like you can have a fantasy football roster, but you don't have a team without a team name, right? Very true. Um, Very true. I like to to call ourselves just subtly right now the dream team. He's Jordan, and I'm Charles Barkley. So like that's kind of how I've been riding nice. lately. But really? I was gonna say that's, it was in Christian Leitner on that team. Hey, I, I play better golf than Christian Leitner. I don't know, man. Like <laughs> <laughs> probably not now. You know, because like once you reach like that financial situation, your golf your golf is like it's what you do. You know, it's like I want to boom. Get there, I'm a dude. pro athlete. I just golf every day. I'm not doing something. I want to get there, dude. I want to get there. And you know yeah, what I want to get? I gotta, where, where, where do you want to get? I want to get on Flamingo Planet. Ooh, by Ecliptic Brewing. Oh, Shout like out to the wife. Scheme. Bring in this. I know. Bring in this Portland, Oregon, Guava Blonde Ale seasonal Ecliptic Ooh. Flamingo Planet. Kenny. Shout That's out. Really cool. That looks tasty. What did you call? Uh, it? What did you call it? Was it? What kind of beer was it? What did you call it? And it is a guava blonde ale. That sounds amazing. I'm kind of digging this thing right now. And just, you know, I don't want to delay your ability to crack open. But, you know, I bought a couple of... So right now I got a bag. Okay. I got two beers I got. I got two beers the wife got. I'm just kind of digging this different flavor, different strokes. You know, what's she thinking that I want to put on the podcast? What I'm thinking I want to put on the podcast? And we're thinking and we're drinking and what you I like it Kenny? i like it you, you've brought some real fire lately and, and i like i like the the collaboration there and that that color scheme on there with that black can with the pink and then that green the pops or is the it a pops. highlighter yellow maybe i'm getting a funny it's a green color. it's a bro. green right? it's a, yeah it's cool. i gotta get better very, picture quality it's very outer space. I like that. I like that a lot. It, it's like one of those things where like if you were walking and then you walk by the beer aisle and you were like, what color is that? Whoa, cool can. Well, that's what I cho- That's know. how I chose this beer Ooh. because I was walking past the beer aisle. The singles. I love the Lucy's on the end where you can choose your own six. I love those. Um, way to step up way to step up grocery stores nice job by you and just you know it's in in light of the holidays and my patriotic spirit i got a roja and you can see i got this american ale here call it the three deep america three deep american ale did you um i gotta ask you something while i crack this ah beer Do they do fireworks in Portland? Yeah, it's funny you say this, okay? Because they do, right? Um, and here's my beef right now, okay? Oh, you got maybe beef. this is this is just me. All right, but I am at a point, okay? Because I'm a fan of fireworks, but I'm not a fan of shitty fireworks, and I'm not a fan of fireworks just to fucking blow shit up. All right, I don't fuck word word. Okay, so like, 
one thing that kind of bugs me is like we are just like especially I'll just speak for the West, the western part of the United States, which is uh much more dry than other areas of the United States. So maybe this is a regional thing. Okay? But 4th of July is coming. Your boy's on. Uh, catches an article. Boom. Centerville, Utah. On fire. From fireworks. I don't get it anymore. I just don't get why we give regular ass people the ability to do a rational ass dumb shit. And we just don't leave it up to the... Pro- like professional fireworks, all four. You go into the Bees game. You go into watch the Hillsboro Hops on a Friday night with the family, with the kids. You know, have a couple cocktails, have a couple brouhaha's, you know. Uh, <laughs> I agree with you 100% there um, it, with with one slight difference. Um, S- snakes and sparkles. You can't, you can't stop stupid. They're going to they're gonna light fire somehow. Um, that sucks. Totally. If, if we, totally. Maybe that we... <sighs> I have no issue. When I was growing up here in Utah, you couldn't do aerial fireworks. That was illegal. Yeah. hundred percent illegal. Yeah. I felt like there were less fires back then. So something they might want to consider. But I, I I love doing fireworks, but I love doing the little packs from like the Walmart or the things that the stay on the store, ground. The fountains and the screamers yeah. and the poppers and not the the, the cool Some ones basic with the shit. colors. They could get pretty Kid big. Stuff. We're talking 15 yeah. feet of a f- shooting colorful. Ex- we finally a got fire to do this fire extinguisher July. to put out. Yeah. yeah, like I could put it out with a beer. Like it really, it's not that big. Um, but, you know, in the spirit of the holiday and with a young child like I have, we had a great time. I had a good time. It was awesome. And I'm all for that, right? I'm not trying to but disrupt the, those the jack- times. The jackasses with the giant bombs. Just the big shit. That they were blowing up until twelve o'clock at night. I, you don't first blowing you don't, shit up. You don't need to be doing that. That's that's a excessive. And it's, it's excessive. like what? What about it? Is I don't know. Like may, maybe I'm boring. Maybe may, maybe I'm sorry, listeners. We're not trying to like kill the vibe. I hope everybody had an amazing Fourth of July. We barbecued up. You know, we were chilling. We enjoyed it the way you got to enjoy it. You know, I think we watched Harry Potter or some shit like that. That's what people do on the 4th of July. That's how American you watched a British sci-fi science fantasy Uh show. Hey, (laughs) fun fact. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a, a, to a interesting our fact independence quick. from Great Britain. Yeah. You watch British <laughs> movies. <Yeah>. Wonderful. <laughs> so, so Harry Potter, just so everybody knows, and just in case our listeners didn't know, all right. Written by an American author. No. So the first book, no, it, you're right. For for America is the Sorcerer's Stone. The original book is actually called the Philosopher's Stone. And everybody across the pond knows it as the Philosopher's Stone. But when they did like their little branding, title, testing on kind of the American demographic, they thought that Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was too intelligent and not didn't so they resonate went with, they went with, with sorcerer the, with they went with sorcerer stone because that mm-hmm. resonated with an american audience more fun fact that was fun yeah but back to the fourth of july not to kill that fourth of july vibe kenny i'm just saying maybe we can limit what what kind of ridiculous so basically, fireworks basically are. what you're saying is out here in this country we have these explosive devices that in the hands of some are extreme and excessive and are causing danger to us as a society. And maybe we should just take away those excessive ones. They could still have Not the smaller, all. they could have the smaller ones. Regulate. Regulate it a little bit more just for the Easy. protection of our lands and people. So that we're not. Makes a lot of sense to me, bro. Fire. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Fireworks. Right. Like, like maybe we keep the big shit to the pros, and we just let <laughs> us all do the small shit. Probably right, that's all a I'm good saying. Good idea, right? Like if you go to a skate park, right, Kenny, yep. you're not gonna see a Tony Hawk fucking ninety foot ramp. 
right? But, but what you are going to do is you're going to roll through the skate park and you're going to fucks with a straight up half co- quarter pipe that's like six feet tall. Hey, I'm all about that. I'm all about that. I fucks, right? with, the, I fucks with snakes and sparklers. I fucks with snakes and sparklers, Kenny. But you know what I don't fucks with? I don't fucks with. Big ass fireworks catching either. everything on fire. I just don't. I don't either. I don't either. Because I, I mean, even the it. pros, they got like fire fighters right on staff. You know, I have fire extinguishers. I After I lit my Prager on fire, I now have fire extinguishers all out of my house. I'm so, prepared. That's nice for that. That was a lesson for me. It was, it was safe. I had, I had a full beer and it did the job. <laughs> uh, but I was like, I should probably have a fire extinguisher. Around. Did you call Ed first? No, I I knew what to do. Oh. I, I, first, I yeah, saved bold my, move gone. First, I saved the bacon wrapped jalapenos. They were stuffed with cream Ooh. cheese. Um, first, I saved those. Took them inside, and then grabbed a beer and ran back out. And grabbed two beers, one to drink and one to dump. Um, smart man, smart man. It was good. It was it was good. It worked out well. It's quite an experience. Though, awesome. I'm not gonna lie. You know what was quite an experience for me, Kenny, was that ecliptic flamingo, flamingo planet, guava, blonde down. It was such an experience. It magically disappeared. You're and thirsty. what did appear. I'm proud of you, dude. That was a right. I'm drinking for sport. All right. What did appear is this Block 15 Brewing Company, Sol Fresco Mexican me Lager. Ooh. Out of Corvallis. Nice. Kenny just hammered it. That's what I'm talking about. Chugging beers like Tom Brady. Sup? I like how Tom Brady did that too. He's like, yeah, I used to be a beer chugger back in college. Like, I bet, but we've seen that photo. Yeah, we, we saw we that Ricky photo. <laughs> like you were smuggling a thirty rack <laughs> into training you camp. Were, like, <laughs> case racing all through that Michigan uh, senior uh, year, bro. We know what you were doing. Just kidding. <laughs> Ah, um, uh, nice. What do I have? I got a cooler. Got my dope. Got my dope Klein Tools cooler here. Dope Klein Tools. What's up, Klein? Ooh, let's see. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go double Roja brewing out of Salt Lake City, Utah. We're going two from Roja. Roja, Roja. Don't say no, ha. Roja, Broja. Uh, that by the way, that American ale was delicious. That was an easy, that was an easy, quick drink, bro. For me, I could, it was that's money. what I'm saying. I'm like, guava blonde ale, uh, come back. Hello, <sighs> but you know, it's summertime, oh. and and you know, one thing I love about summertime it's Will Smith. is um, just sitting out on the back porch in the evening, dude, and just enjoying the sun, sunset, you know, and that that time. Uh, and so, amen, brother. Thanks to Roja, I can uh, now enjoy that in a can with their back porch pale ale. Oh, nice. I like their, like, uh, the can and the way that they do the color scheme with the artwork and, like, how, so, like, yeah, check it. it's, crazy. Tr- it's all, like, crazy symmetrical and it's stuff like that. It's a tree. Like that. It's I, I believe that one of their things is renewables as well. So I should probably pull that up. Let's see if I can do that really quick. But uh, they got their little symbol there which they do the arrows and it's like a lot of fine lines it's kind of cool it's different from what you're seeing on the shelf and i like that now question you know just because i'm sure the listeners are wondering you know are these are these regular store beers because you know one myth that i often hear still consistently is that people in utah believe that they're still slinging three two kinney but so, putting five six on the label. But hey, I'm just saying people forget people haven't learned that Utah is slanging real brewskis at the Hammonds, at the Smith's Marketplace, at the Macy's. You guys got Albertsons there? They they um not no not anymore. But I did I did see an Albertsons truck on the freeway a couple of weeks ago. It tripped me out. I thought like I might have hit like a time warp and like might have gotten back into 98. And I was like, oh, shit. It was not I, that. But um, I shop at Albertsons on a regular basis. So I feel you. I know they still exist, but like, yeah, you know, 
I live like three minutes away from one. It's kind of nice. So um, it's like, what do I want? Do I want to go this way or do I want to go that way? You know? So it's a good problem. Um, I like this. The Roja Brewing Project in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Ten years ago is the dream of Rob, the row in Roja. Uh, he was uh, plotting breweries. Chris Haas was busy creating beer. Um, so Haas is the Ha, Roja, two dudes. Um, okay, okay. Rob and uh, Haas there, and they uh, started this uh, brewing company. And they, I got to tell you, this back porch is tasty as well so if you're in utah and you see this on the shelf and you're unsure this gets the two line can approval and if you're from utah this means something to you if you're not you're going to be like what does that mean but if you're from utah this gets it's like the get part approval this is like two line cans beer approval it's that this is this is two thumbs two homies give it two th- well, four th- four thumbs up. four thumbs four thumbs two homies Give two thumbs times two up. 16 thumbs. They do Thirsty Thursdays down at the uh, brewery. If you're in Salt Lake City and you want to check it out, they're down on Ken- Kensington Avenue. Oh, that no wonder you like them. Yeah. Can't spell Kensington without Ken. Ken. That's what's up. Ken. So, yeah. Bro, uh... Have you been catching any other Scottish Open yet, or what? Is it on right now? I haven't. Well, yet. I don't know, but I'm super. It's, it's part of the right. DP it tour now, right? right? Well, yeah. And then, it like, yeah, it's the first year on the PGA, not on the PGA. So this year is the first year that the Scottish Open is not a part of the PGA tour, and it is a part of the DP tour. Which oh, is, is that the shift on it? Is it? I'm. I'm. I was. I was wondering. Oh I'm, no! That I'm was. Asking. I'm questioned. That. I'm. A, that's a question mark there. Um. Oh, I thought you felt pretty confident. I was rolling with it. You know? Oh, dude, that's my bad. No, I have no idea. Uh, let's see. Let's check out. Let's see what Wikipedia has for us um, on this. You know, I probably should have done this research in advance. You know, we're amateurs here, um, and that's the difference right there. Sorry, sorry, everybody, but my beer is delicious. I did prepare that. Preach, preach. (laughs) That's all the matters here. But you know, I'm I'm very interested in this uh, transition from the Scottish Open into St. Andrews. I like that most guys are just going to like stay across the pond the whole time. Yeah. I think it's going to be good for a lot of them, too, to help them adjust. Oh, they got Justin Harding in third. Is that the same Justin Harding that was uh, on the LIV tour playing, dude? That would be crazy. Probably. I saw him tee off the other day then, dude. Yeah. Dude, I just watched him play last week. He was I, in a yeah, Bro- that's right. Brooks, that Brooks Kepka photo that I uh, sent yeah, you? Yeah, he was he in was, that, he he was was in in that, that group. group. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, he's in third right now. That's what you need. You need like somebody like Justin Hardy. Yeah, there he is. You need a, you need a live tour guy to win. Yeah, you need a live tour guy to win to like dude, Gary kind of Wood- validate G- that live tour. Gary Woodland's in second. That's dope. I'm a Gary Woodland guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, hopefully you know we'll see what happens, dude. It, it, it'll be very interesting. Uh kind of how this uh, how this plays out, you know. Well, let's see. NBC Sports Group PressBox.com says that the Genesis. Scottish Open, is that the tournament we're talking about? Correct, sir. Featuring 14 of the top 15 golfers on the official World Golf Ranking. Becomes an official PGA Tour event for the first time this week and is co-sponsored by the DP World Tour. The Renaissance Club in North Berwick, Scotland hosts the Genesis Scottish Open for the fourth year in a row. 
Those okay, seem so like this all is facts. The, the this is the first, first year. year. It's a PGA Tour event. So event, I'm yeah. interested to know if this is the same Harding that played at the Live event. How is he able to play in the Scottish Open? I thought they were banned from PGA Tour events unless they were majors. Is this a major? They are. I have that article right here for you, my guy. Thank you. All right. Just it's so, just almost so you like know. we planned it. They are DP World Tour players, not PG. So because it's got it. So does it, and DP they World Tour exemption. probably doesn't care. Yeah. I so mean, you get Brandon Grace, who won. By the way, saw him chip. I saw the win. Right. Like, you saw the yeah, chip. I, that was I on saw the chip center. In. I saw the chip in on uh, 16. To, and once he chipped in on 16, I looked at the homie. I said, hey, bro, this motherfucker's winning it. I'm out. I'm going to beat traffic. Because I like at that point, you Man, chip in. You that old? You chip. You chip yeah, he's like 16. Boom. He could, And it was, I mean, he was up there with DJ, right? Like, yeah, you like, probably are like four hours into the event, too. Uh, like, I was there at like around 9.30. And I left around six. Yeah, you done. Yeah, you it's a, it's an interesting it's an interesting time, but yeah. So you got Brandon Graves, um, who won. Justin Harding, who was in the top part of the live tour. Adrian, I'm gonna probably say this wrong. Adrian o- Otegu, I, I don't know. And then Ian Poulter, uh, who you know, Ian Poulter's a personality. What he color were Ian Poulter's pants? pants? Uh, when I saw him, he had like an Easter teal green, like Ooh. an Easter, like, like an Easter color. green. I yeah, like, like kind of this color right here. Yeah, kind of like this color right here. in that color. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. I Dude, the, I will say this. I was, I was, you know, we've talked about this on the podcast, right? The Live Tour. We've talked about how we both feel about it, what our thoughts are about it. I'm a fan. After yeah. the experience, I'm so, a fan. Let's let's rewind. Let's rewind for a second cuz for some of our listeners out there who might not know this already, you attended the Live Event Tour at Pumpkin Ridge in Portland last week um on Correct. the final day. Saturday. Yeah, on uh, prime time. Prime time. And 54 due, hole event. Then due to this experience, you're you kind of changed your tune here on the Live Event. You're like on board. I'm I'm kind of a fan, and you, and I'm gonna ex- explain why. Please, but what's your question? Oh, yo, yo, we actually had a good spot for you to edit and come right back in because you were just about to start a valid point on the live tour. But before you do that, dude, I'm gonna get a Zoom membership. I'm gonna fucking buy that tomorrow. So I don't be not to deal with this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's some bullshit. Just forty. It's worth it to me. I just googled the rates. I'll take care of that, and I'll send it. I'll have. To, I'll be the one. But I'll just whatever. Take you can edit this out or not. I don't care. But that forty minute limit is bullshit. As a sales representative, what myself, happened to that? Professionally, you can't do shit in forty minutes, man. Come on, Yo, unless you already have the business and are doing some sort of quick follow up. You ain't getting any business in 40 minutes. You need longer. That's right. I had a I had a meeting the other day that was scheduled for 30 minutes. I'm like, this could take longer than that. We had to reschedule another meeting this morning just to cover bullshit. all the shit we missed in the meeting yesterday. It's bullshit. Like, That's what I'm saying. Come on, man. That come four, it's on, it's a man. messed up mark. If you did it at 60 minutes or even 61 minutes, it was maybe free forever. Give you an hour. Like you could still utilize it, but they just they get they got greedy, man. They just trying to make it's more. It's a money. shitty sponsor, Kenny. It's a shitty sponsor. I don't fucks with Zoom. All right. Okay. But we do. We do fucks with Zoom for no, this we podcast, use it. So shout out. We use it. Shout out. And we're about shout to give to them money. So yeah. I actually own like three mm-hmm. shares of stock in Zoom, too. That's pretty solid. That's it probably was, that's a great a, idea. It was a grab during the pandemic. I downloaded Robin Hood, another sponsor of the show here. And yeah. um, like sometimes, like when I'm pooping or whatever, I'll just like buy stocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trading fantasy football. It is bro. exactly what I do. In the, I don't do it as much during fantasy football season. It, it literally satisfies the same craving in my mind. You thirsty? That's so crazy because this 
Copper Lion Amber Ale here is going to satisfy my craving, Kenny. Oh, that can is fresh with the beer Isn't can this in the so pine nice. tree with the cutaway art. That's cool. Who made right, that? Aren't, right here. This is out of uh, PN Dub Stevenson, Washington. Shout out to Backwoods. Backwoods, huh? You know how many times we be backwards. Ooh. That looks that looks um that's a pretty dope ass pour, I'm not gonna lie. Oh that's got a good color to it. It's kind of dark. What kind of beer is that? It's an amber ale. I haven't had one of these in a hot minute. But the artwork cut cut me up. Well, I've been um, pretty pumped on Rooster's Brewing Company out of Ogden, Utah. Um, they've made a big push. Got some great beers, a line of seltzers, and a pretty good bacon blue cheeseburger, if I might say so myself. Um, and out. I'm going to feature them right here with their High Desert Hazy IPA. I like what it says here. Great beer, gritty town, good people. That's what we all about. It's uh, I I just want to piggyback on, on your beer, Kenny, and, and just let the listeners know that uh, I can validate Ken's statement here. Uh, I had roosters inside the Salt Lake City Airport. So if you listen to this fresh episode of Two Homies Chatting and you're on the road or traveling airports, stop by roosters. Uh, I went with, because I was watching the Celtics lose the NBA finals that day, I went with the chicken fingers and fries for the longevity of the food. I could snack on it over time. Shout out chicken fingers and fries. Were fire. But I did fuck with that high desert hazy IPA. I might have one right now. It was 101 today here in Salt Lake City. Um, so that's Salt Lake City temperature of 101 degrees, projected to be 103 tomorrow. Um, I've, I've been melting, dude. Everything melts. Melting. I keep a cooler in the truck and I got to change the ice at noon. Bro, I. In a no. cooler. It's a cooler, bro. It doesn't keep it cooler in that kind of time. Yeah, that to me is just it's now it's tough. I, I want to get back to live tour, but real quick, you know, please, just like like because we, as, well. yeah, like it being a kid from Vegas who knows how to handle the heat. Um, it's a desert, you know. You climb, you climatize away from it over the years. So then you move to Utah. Utah's equally as hot. I mean, honestly, if you just match the altitude. Just not for and as then, long. Yeah, yeah. Cool Utah is like night. two weeks of this, and it'll chill out. Vegas is like two months of this. It's like, yeah, it's it's fucking hot. Yeah, I I ain't fucking with that. I mean, one. How I'm often? Not. I don't want to detract you because I want to keep you where you're going. But yeah, 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 yeah. No, how, we're, we're how we're many in it. how many days a year does it is it like one ten or higher? Where in Vegas? Yeah. Uh, uh, I I remember. Oh, we could look this up. I remember the record they had, like a record, at one point. Uh, how you many keep, days? You keep row? going. I'll look that up. You keep going. Okay, so so here's back to our original thought before Zoom cut us off, and you know detracted us a little bit down the pathway of righteousness. But uh, <laughs> live tour. Here's here are my thoughts. Okay, so before you're converted, you're converted. You went to the event. You're converted. You're a fan now, and you've changed yeah. your your taste to the to the <laughs> tour after attending an event. You don't know what you know until you know. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. Right, like I like the traditional format of the PGA Tour. Yes. There, that is that is ideal. It's funny, to me. that's my follow up question was going to be related to that. Keep going. Okay, I I love that format. You, uh, we're in sales. We make more money the more we perform. So therefore, I am a fan of that. But what I'm also a fan of is 
that there is a space for a league that is just for the fans and for Word. what golf has become in the COVID time. Who sit okay? up straight and drink to that. That's cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Golf has grown up a lot in ten in the last ten years. The fan Not base for that. golf is bigger and different. It, and the and average the age, I, I kid you not, the average age, bro, was like 23. That's important like, to note. It's young. That's important It is young. Know. It's not just that's, grandpa's golf. That's game. telling you how many kids were there. Now, now, I'm lucky. My homie hooked it up, right? I, I got the ability. I met Greg Norman, shook his hand, got his autograph, uh, made him laugh. Cracked a joke. I watched Phil Mickelson on the range, Kenny, for about an hour. Just watching him analyze his stuff. But I got to see more people on the range, too, a little bit. you know. But I really just wanted to break down Phil. But, like, you get these points where it's like you're on the range and they're bumping music, dude. It's, 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 a, it's a fan yeah. player experience. It's you want to go watch your guys play really good golf. And, I mean, like, dude, these guys... They make shots that are just, they're insane. These guys are yeah. insane. But like you're watching a lot of stuff. You're watching how they approach, how they're thinking on their way, how they carry themselves, how they're just breaking down what they're doing on the driving range. Like it's, uh, I'm a fan of the live tour. I think there's a space for the live tour. I think that uh, it is here. It's here to stay. It was fun. Uh, it, but it is very much what golf has become, I would say, in the age of like TikTok and uh, like Instagram reels, like 30 second highlight, like content golf. Like that's the live tour. But there's still like I'm still watching every PGA tournament, you know, like so it's live live tour. Check it out. It was awesome. Is there? Can you watch it yet? I haven't been able to watch it. I'm a golf consumer. So, like, if, it's YouTube. If fans of the show yeah. know this. Like, I, I watch golf all day. I watch if the LPGA tour is on. I watch it. I love it. I love watching golf. I watch the Senior Tour. I watch the PGA Tour. I would watch Live Golf, but I can't watch it anywhere. YouTube kind of has it, but like, there's like advertisements pasted all over it. So like. How am I supposed to watch yeah, because that's off like this. They're controlling. They're controlling the. They're giving accessibility, and it's the only the, way you pay for accessibility is by is signing up for that membership. So, so okay, like that's fine. They don't have all, any streaming rights anywhere, right? So like, that's you I'm know, saying. they don't have that's their it. whole. But here's fix that, and I'm here's, a fan. Here's the thing that I've kind of come to learn a little bit. And, and I think that this is kind of a talking point that I think is missed, right? Is like NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, they have collective bargaining agreements, right? They have agreements between the players, the unionization of their players, and the, and the owners that say, you're getting this much money. Well, we demand this much money because they come to watch us. And the PGA Tour and the PGA Tour players, they have like something like that, but they don't have a CBA. They don't have a collective bargaining agreement where they're getting health insurance, where they're getting 401, sure. where they're getting more of the pie because they're creating the pie. Just like what's happened in college sports with the NIL deals. If I'm going to make my university or the NCAA $25 billion a year because I play for Alabama and I, but I'm not going to get drafted, but I generated billions of dollars, I should get some of that money. So, like, the live tour is just like, hey, thanks for all you do. Here's a big fat check. You're set for the rest of your life. But now just go play some really good golf compete create this kind of like team format where like there's more ways to win than one and, and as far as i've heard they don't care where else you play other than their like what is it eight events 
Yeah, and they're they're planning to do fourteen next year, from what I heard. From and, the and uh, is their contract for the money that they got this year include next year? I, I have never no idea. I'd be interested I to think, know that. I feel like this is like a. Um, is it just this for is this like year? A, a heavy upfront investment for long term. You know, I mean, like, dude, it was it was fun, man. It was fun. It was a good time. So, um, but. I'm still like, I'm always gonna watch a PGA event over a live event. It was just fun to attend to. Same, like I'm still on that side be, of the fence, but I would yeah. love to have been there with you at Pumpkin Ridge, walking around. I saw your video. You sent me a course. bunch. I loved the updates. Um, I loved great how course. I loved how in the Brooks Kepka shot you sent me. I loved how quickly the fans were able to lean in to get a better look. If you watch that clip, Brooks Kepka hits this shot, and he's off to the side of the fairway a little bit. And like almost right away, some dude with beers stacked in one hand, two 24-ounce oh, yeah. cans stacked in one hand, leans in out the side, poking his head over here to get an angle of the shot as if he was the one that hit it. And then before it even lands, the whole crowd just starts moving. And it's Crazy. kind of you could tell the fan orientation of of that event was very fan focused. It's it's and there's banter. There's banter between the players and the fans. My here's number one feedback for the Live Tour. Hey, Greg, if you're listening, appreciate you. Um, any of the uh, any of the guys listening to 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 Omi Shampires, thank you. That'd be fucking sick. But, you got, uh, if you're figure, listening, what? Yeah, figure out your beer concessions because nobody needs to wait 50 minutes for alcohol at one of those events. Like, figure your shit out, okay? There's can't handle it. I'm thirsty. It's hot. It's Portland hot. Uh, 88. So, no, dude. Like, Portland hot's like 72. Oh, shit. That ain't hot. Man. Dude, That's nice. It feels, it feels nice, but it's dude, I'm, hot. I'm ready. It's hot. Oh, come on. So, like, listen, listen, 101 <clears throat> degrees today in Salt Lake City, forecasted 103 tomorrow. I, I can't do this, dude. I melt for the five days a year in Salt Lake City that we average. Oh, that's an eight. For the eight days a year that Salt Lake City averages 100 degrees or higher, those eight days, I melt, dude. I can't do it. My wife dude, just, my wife's from the up. desert. She's, she's, she's a desert star. She loves it. She goes out and just lays in it like a lizard. I, I'm like, <laughs> I set thermostat at 69 <laughs> and I hide. What up? In the, in the basement because one God is I'm hot a, out there. I got that. I got the AC window unit set at 66, bro. Pump. Pump. So it. keeping it cool. If any of our listeners out there were alive in 1947, they definitely remember this year in Las Vegas when they had the record for most consecutive days over 100 degrees. And they set that record at 45, 45 straight days of melting. Dude, I don't know, man. (laughs) The craziest thing, dude, was like when I first moved to Vegas, right? We moved there in like, uh, fuck, I want to, I can't fully remember actually when we moved there, but I remember we, well, we, yeah, we rem- I remember moving there like around the Super Bowl time. Yeah. So it was, it was February. Um, and that first summer we moved out of the apartments that we originally lived in and moved somewhere else. And there was like a oddly wet summer and then there was a massive amount of grasshoppers everywhere dude like you would like step and grasshoppers would be fucking everywhere i was like where did my parents move me to like i do not fuck with las vegas what is happening and like i'm like yeah like everywhere and like floods we we had this apartment off like a golf course uh in summerlin area and like dude just i was like what is happening and then, like, every summer after that was just, like, balls hot, dude. Just, like, in that super, same In that same year, tasty. in that same year in Las Vegas in 1947, 
100 out of the 367 days, 365 days of that year were over 100 degrees. That's gnarly. That's gnarly. That's hot. That's hot. That is, there's Here's one the, There's one place on this list provided to me by weatherchannel.com. By the way, I just signed out. up for my, I just finally succumbed and signed up for the premium membership for Weather Channel app. I don't know if my you're guy. like me. I check it three or four Getting times historical a day. Data. Um, historical that's, that's, data. Historical data. The ads are gone and it works right away and my radar's on point. All I'm saying is if you're on the fence about it, give them your money and, and enjoy the app. I also subscribe to <laughs> I also subscribe to the uh, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association app, <laughs> app. Um so we're talking like I spend like eight dollars a month for premium weather apps. This is who I am. <laughs> this is who I am as a person. <laughs> <laughs> There's one other place on this list that has more days over one hundred degrees in a year, and I'll give you one guess fucking death valley yeah that's the one but there's another one that i meant death valley has like 145 out of its days every year as 100 uh it's tucson close it's phoenix and i don't do uh, okay i'm messing phoenix yeah it's hot oh it's hot in here dude oh yeah oh. you gotta get that wardrobe change What's our timing here? Oh, dude, it's time for fourth quarter beers, dude. Dude, that's so crazy because I was mad, thirsty. How, oh, gosh. I gotta, as you prepare your beer, how come yeah. in the Zencaster, shout out to Zencaster for allowing us a platform to record our podcast. What episode is this now, dude? 59, dude. 59, dude. 10 more for the historic landmark. Shout out episode 10 more for the historic landmark. We should do a historic landmark episode, 10 episodes. But 59 is coming to you recorded via... 69 favorite things about this podcast. (laughs) Ooh. Ooh, Nice. Greatest greatest memories. That'll be our anniversary episode. Most people would do it at like 100. We do it at 69. (laughs) <laughs> i actually kind of like that for us what up? yeah <laughs> i'm actually kind of into that for us uh, our anniversary episode will be number episode number 420 oh, i love that that has that has <laughs> double mantra on top that has longevity uh, to it that means like a double like, accent i i would assume that mantra. i would have one child by the time we hit episode 400 and 20 is that in the is that I'm, in the worst is that in the plan no but i'm, I'm just saying God, like I that's longevity so, that's like pull down the dude down it's like down dude, pulling out here. did you, are you pull, pulling out for the homies come on <laughs> man for the homies put some <laughs> put some of your seat out there do it again Bro, brothers need some, you some got cousins. a lot to brothers you have a lot to, do you do you listen to the daily stoic podcast with brian holiday every day yeah of course of course did you not hear the one two days ago where he talked about the people out there who are like we shouldn't have kids look at this world that we live in and he's oh, like I'm, you fucking idiots this is the people who should be having kids is the people who are <laughs> conscious enough to understand that we have to do things differently and i was like i was like smacking myself in the head like laughing at how and awesome I, that was and how cool the like, perspective it was because yes and so because it came up put one out there for the homies man you see, did you did I, the legend would agree with me? You got some good things to pass <laughs> on, and you got to pass I, them on. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's we, all we'll get there dude. from that perspective. It'll, you got, you know, you 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 both have some good things to pass on. Just say so. I pre- appreciate that. If we when we when we do cross that bridge, I just want you to know it'll be one of the first things, and then two. Good. I hope. I hope. The kid is cooler than us. That's all. I just hope like we get that's all you can we hope raise for. a kid that's, that's just goal. fucking cooler than us, nicer right than up. us, better than us, cooler than us. You know, right off shit the like bat, that. you got it right. See, right off the bat, mm-hmm. most a lot of people yeah. are like scared that their their kids would be cooler than them. That should be the goal. Oh yeah, I want you. You're training I want you, your you know, like he, yeah, like I want you to be better than me. You know, Their like I, I want makes you I, look good. 
But I also want you to make it, I want to make you earn it, right? Like, like, don't, you know, I ain't, I know that I'm having kids later on in life, right? For an example. So like, for me, I'm trying to stay as fit as possible, as long as possible. Because say I do have a child and I happen to have like a son. First, he's going to be like the spawn of me. So he's going to be a sassy motherfucker. And so like, you know, I'm going to have to handle that business know. at times. You the know? way things I'm blend. To... The way things blend, yeah. you never know what you get. No. I, you know, I'm going to have to put buckets on them. I'm going to have to, you know, put, you know, catch catch balls, throw football, you know, whatever, whatever sport thing. You might just thing. want to sketch. You don't know. That's true, too. And if he just <laughs> wants to dance, I'm going to learn some dance You're... moves and we're going to we're going to dance, you know, you shit like that. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he's into landscaping and fucking, well, I don't care. You know, I support whatever. All I'm saying is if I get lucky, you know, it'd be great. It'd be great. I'd be all in for it. That's it, the right attitude. And that's, if we that's were blessed to have example. that opportunity. Yeah. And that's the right attitude. And that's exactly, and that just is another flag to prove my point. That's like the world needs people like you to give us their children because our children need to save us because we fuck some shit up, man. I'm thirsty. Yeah. I'm thirsty too. So let's fuck some shit up, bruh. What you got? By the way, I just want you to know that, like, if somebody were like, yo, do you fucks with this ecliptic brewing? Flamingo planet? Yes. Shout out, baby. Thank you. That. That's delicious. Uh, oh, you fucks with this copper line amber ale? Yes. I think I crushed that amber ale faster than any other amber ale in the history of amber ales. All right. If they were like, oh, you fucks with this sofresco? Mexican lager? Yes. 100%. But you know what I'm fucking with right now, Kenny? Tell me. This Fort George Power Cycle Nelson Hazy Pale Ale. Ooh, but hazy. I want you to look at this artwork and so, I want you to tell me what you see. Uh, it looks like a spaceship. Um, perhaps an extension cord. Uh, is that a vacuum cleaner? I don't know, dude. It's a little hard for me to tell from this perspective. Here, let me switch. Let me switch to speaker and hit you with the full screen. Let me get a better zoom here. Can you get um, a better zoom? I see an extension. Is that an extension cord? Is this space? Is it space related? Uh, it, it has a black background, but I would think like, you know, I'll give you a hint. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm never going to get it, dude. No, I, I'm going to give you a hint. Okay. Okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on. The ads. The ads are playing. Dude, you guys have Hold on, Ken. Come on. You know it's worth it. YouTube premium? No, man. I, I, I got Come patience, on, dude. I, get, I can wait. Show. For... YouTube? Yeah. Anybody who's listening to this podcast that oh. understands. It's a copy machine? Yeah, dude. It's a smashed out copy, office space style copy machine. And you talk about the ghetto boys, guys. My man. I knew you'd get the hint. Yeah, all right. I knew you'd get the yeah, hint. Yeah, dude. Shout I definitely him. got the hint. Ah, boom. Pop that. That's great. Pop that. that. Oh, I love from. Dude, shout out, shout out to Office Space for perfectly um, encapsulating a generation of a workforce right there, way before that generation even existed. That's pretty cool. I love that. Straight movie. up, like I quote it all the time. Tech before tech, dude. Total tech, tech, before, tech, tech. before tech. It's. Uh, I love that movie. Shout and out to Mike Judge for just handling it. I um I quoted it today in a meeting because I had a I had a meeting later with the Bobs. That was my excuse. The Bobs? Yeah, I, was, I got a meeting with the got Bobs a meeting later. with the Bobs, <laughs> and I left for work. <laughs> Some gangster like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow I'm a carbon fish on my desk. 
<laughs> I might even hey, fuck around with I might Bob? even fucks around with one of these you went to brewing Westwater hard seltzer limeades at work tomorrow. Dude, Ooh. These things are tasty. Ah. Listen, hey, I'm a big fan I'm of sunsetting myself. off on a seltzer. That's what I'm going for. A little bit of lightness. I'm about to sunset off this podcast. I'm going to step out under a waning gibbous moon on a clear Ooh. summer evening. And um, I don't usually put seltzers in a glass, but I'm going to enjoy this one. Thank you. Wendell. I like seltzers in a glass with a little couple ice cubes. You know, keep it colder longer. Like a Sprite. Nobody tells me how to drink oh, my own drink. This is like a squirt. This is good. I'll tell you what. If you like squirt and you're looking for a hard seltzer, get this you win a limeade. Because it'll satisfy your craving. <laughs> get this you win a limeade. Oh, dude, we got, we got something else that we need to talk about. Right? Holla at me. And I don't... Um, I don't want us to not talk about it because if we don't talk about it this week, we'll never talk about it. But let's give us something to talk about. Uncle Danny's making moves in Utah, bro. I've been I've been saying it. I've been telling you. You've been telling. I've been been telling you the same thing. I knew that's what he was here to do. He was here to make. The moves that the organization has been scared to do in the past. And no way they were shipping out Rudy before Danny Ainge got there. And in the local media, they've been referring to him as DA. And I love that. And I love that. Uncle Danny, in my heart, you are now Uncle DA. Love that. Um, (laughs) He's um, got a new coach, Will Hardy. And he is younger than Celtics. me. He's from the Both Celtics organization. And here's my favorite fact about Will Hardy. If you're listening out there and you've been living under a rock in Utah because it's so hot and you don't know this already. Um, he's a film guy. He came up through the film room like Spolstra. And I like, like that. Spolstra. I like that a lot. And I like that perspective. And they're obviously cleaning house. And I don't know if Donovan Mitchell is going to be a part of it. Um, I feel like he's young enough to be a part of it. But I also feel like he's worth so much that it's silly to not make that move. Um, so my, 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 my gut says that it's an all-new roster next year, man, for my Utah Jazz. But I kind of hope that I kind of secretly hope that Donovan Mitchell's the the key piece of of that, and that they retain him as the oldest, youngest piece of this. Because um, I feel like if he were able to kind of humble himself a bit and step into some bigger shoes, that he could probably be that pillar piece of a championship organization in Utah because. I honestly have zero doubts that Danny Ainge will put together a roster that can win a championship. And yet to be seen, but um, I like Will Hardy. I think he might might mess around and be a good coach. But we're going to suck for a few years, that's for sure. First, listen, all right, any Utah Jazz fan that is listening to this podcast – Listen in the, to the words that are about to come out of my mouth. All right. Danny Ainge rebuilds while winning. That's your one. Okay. Two, the picks he will get for Donovan Mitchell or equal the volume of picks of Rudy Gobert. And you will have such a plethora of picks, you'll be able to package picks to trade up. And let me share something about Dan. Oh, D.A. Oh, D.A. Oh, D.A. Tell me about old D.A. We got a couple similar nicknames there, Danny. I go by O.D.A. But let me share about old D.A. 
Okay. My man, I like that. That's, ooh, I'm going to make dirty rice tomorrow. Ooh, my man. <laughs> but listen, all right, Danny knows how to draft talent. Yep. Celtics roster right Draft. now, NBA Finals. Jalen Brown drafted by Danny Ainge. There's a Marcus few. Smart, there's a few star players on other people's rosters that were drafted by Danny. That Ainge. are one hundred percent. So, <laughs> so when you're looking at how he's going to rebuild, you got that kid Through coming out of France next year. That's like seven the feet dead, tall. The dead giveaway that dominated to me, Rudy. The dead giveaway to me that that was complete rebuild mode was hiring a 34-year-old coach who's brilliant and from everything I can tell is probably going to do a pretty clean job. Um, See, but you, you don't... Sean McVay was 34 when he took over the Rams. Did you think they were rebuilding? I did. Or and he was like 30, 32. They, 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 and they then lost they won. one. And then they won one. So, yeah. like, don't... don't. I think You're what right. happens is it's like right. we're mistaking... We're mistaking... Like, we're... You're right. Like, when they hired him... I said, I, I messaged my boss. And I was like, coach volleyball, they said, right? Like 34 years old, bro. I'm fucking 35. You're 37. Like we could be fucking NBA coaches right now, right? Yeah. But like the game has evolved differently and the athlete has evolved differently. Yeah, so you have right. to find the, the guy that can speak to to – the guys that are coming out and all the future guys that are coming in. 25 guys to that 29 that. year olds. You got to speak to 24 to 30 year olds. Like that six year gap. Yeah. You got to be able to speak to them. And you're right. 55 year old coaching veteran, extreme amount of knowledge, zero amount of communication skills for Gen Zers who are going to be playing in the NBA in the next couple of years. When you're that young, not even our generation, kid. bro, because you're so old. It's not even our generation. <laughs> our generation is coaching these motherfuckers. Shit, we old. Like when you are that young and you get a position of that stature, your confidence level and in, in how you interact with human beings is absurd. All right, real quick, Kenny. Okay, we got five minutes left of this episode. Due to legality. Okay. More I'm going to throw a couple things that. at you. Okay. I, I'm going to throw a couple things at you. Like okay? fire? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's speak on a few topics as we go. Okay. First topic. Shout out to the Raiders. Okay. Naming Sandra Douglas Morgan as their new team president. The first female team president in the history of the NFL. What are your thoughts, Ken? Awesome. 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 Cheers. As a Browns fan, um, looking around the league for maybe just just some pitfall, backup, favorite teams maybe to root for because some things might not go the way we thought. Uh, the Raiders are looking pretty nice down there in Las Vegas, although I don't bucks with 100-plus degree weather. Next. <laughs> uh Next question. As a Browns fan, how do you feel about getting a fifth round pick for Baker Mayfield? Go. Uh, at least we got something. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, grimy. Yo, the Browns. Look, yo, next episode, we're going to talk about conspiracy theories in sports. And I think a conspiracy theory in sport right now is the fact that the Cleveland Browns self-sabotage themselves anytime they get an ounce of success. Congratulations anytime. on Jaco Jacoby Brissett. Okay. I'm excited um, to pay him $230 million. <laughs> so last, last question, Ken, before we fully sunset off in the night and thank our sponsors, Kenny, your favorite golf tournament in the world hits its 150th. <laughs> What? anniversary how how you feeling oh dude i'm so excited the open is coming it's from the old course the classic st andrews tiger woods will be there could it be his last open i don't know i'm so fired up to watch golf at 2 a.m in the morning in my garage i love the open it's a golf tournament 
they've been having it for 150 years. 150. That's insane to me. That's the it's got to be the oldest sporting event in history. Like I don't know, we should probably I think the like the up. Olympics. Well, I guess like that's that. a good point. That's a pretty valid yeah, I, I shut Thank up you. about that. But it's a, it's a really Make old sure. golf tournament, <laughs> at least. Um, it's pretty good, and it's my favorite. And I love the Masters, and there's, there's nothing like Augusta. And I, and I, to me, they're like Christmas Eve, Christmas morning. They're like two of the same kind of thing for me. It's like that's when golf season starts, and that this is when golf season peaks for me. Is in mid July when they go overseas and they play the Lynx golf. And they struggle in the wind, and the winners minus one. I love it. I love okay. it. Real quick. All right. You know, shout out to to Zencaster. Shout out to Zoom. Shout out to Spotify, Apple, all the all the streaming service. Shout out to you, bro. Come up, come up to Oregon. Let's let's plan a trip offline. Me, you, Wheaties. We'll throw another person in there with a couple, couple some. You know, family trip, family trip. Airbnb Coos Bay, okay. We go play Banded Dunes, which is as yes. close as you're gonna get. I've played Banded to... Dunes a hundred times virtually. Let's come. Let's go. Let's go play <laughs> I know Banded that course Dunes. Well, bro. <laughs> let's go play. Let's go do a weekend and play Banded Dunes all weekend long, dude. Hell yeah. We'll fly the parents out. We'll get the parents out. We'll get Mo Ed. You coming? Bring yes. it. Bring your asses, West. Yes, we're flying out our listeners. <laughs> yeah we're flying flying out one of our favorite listeners congratulations no we're, hey. flying, we're flying out our only two listeners bro i hope you had a great birthday i hope you had a great fourth i did of july. i did i hope everybody that's listening to the podcast had a great fourth of july but uh, you know for the most part dude this is uh i love doing this with you so i did too bro appreciate yeah. you man yeah it'll be fun it'll be fun but seriously dude band and dudes this is fucking two banded dudes. When's the best season like, for banded dudes? August? I, any season, dude. I fucks with banded dudes. Like, I fucks with banded dudes. By the way, just so we know, I don't know, uh, sidebar note, before we fully sign off, uh, for the listeners who know about the fucks with uh, goal, I'm pretty sure I hit over 11 for sure. I fucks with that. Yeah. Me, I'll I'll update you offline fully, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Please do because I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. 